Sheesh. <laughs> Greg, I hope, I hope we get a good Gregory in there. <laughs> Lay down. Lay down. Okay, Where's his... okay we're ready. Who's go- who's starting who's it? Starting it. Not it. Ah! Ah! Ted. <laughs> oh. Um, welcome to New Wave After Dark. This is Ted the Mountain Man Morris. Um, <laughs> this week <laughs> we are talking about one of my favorite topics, filtration. And we're gonna kind of dive into the main three ones: uh, mechanical, biological, and of course. Chemical. Chemical. Thank you for the assist there. I was like, wait, what was the third one there? <laughs> you said comical? Comical. comical. Yeah, comical. Definitely there will be we'll some have comical some of ones too, yeah. on there as well. Um, so pretty much diving into the first part of it, I'll start off with biological. How important is biological filtration in a reef tank? Necessary. I think that's pretty much the only one out of the group that I'm going to say is definitely hands down you need it in the tank. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. If you don't have biological filtration in your setup, it's not going to work. It's just pretty much as simple as that. Uh, your cycles won't run correctly and everything of that nature. Would you guys concur? Did I start a good I, conversation? Yeah, I would hope. It was okay. No, I would hope fair. everyone knows that. <laughs> it was but okay. You, but you never yeah, know. You need biological yeah. filtration for the nitrogen cycle. And biological so. filtration is not all equal. And that is where... I reached out into the archives and I brought out what we used to use um, back in the day. So for for those of you people just listening. Yeah, um, so I have a whole shed, which you guys call the she shed, outside. It's uh, almost 3,000 square feet of archives and ancient stuff that we used to use that I, for some reason... Feel that I can't throw away. Jesus. This one is definitely, uh, or we'll auction it off if for someone for free. That'd be fantastic. This please come take box it. of delight here <laughs> that I didn't even clean. Yeah, exactly. Um, is what uh, we used to use as a bio tower is what we call them. Um, this one was custom made by uh, something fishy, which no longer exists anymore. But it had your basic pull out tray, which no longer exists. I don't know where that went. But um, these bio balls, um, which they, in theory, they were supposed to do great things because it was just surface area for bacteria. The problem was they were detritus collectors. So oh, they, they did, did exactly things. what they were meant not to do. They did collect all the stuff and then poof. poof. They did great things. <laughs> they did great things. Not the just, right ones. Just not the right ones. So this uh, tried and trusty, no longer in use. Um, I, I think a lot of people can use these in freshwater tanks. But again, you have the same problems there's a lot better biomedia now um instead of these old plastic balls again um <laughs> that sorry. for some reason <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> so yeah no more plastic balls and uh and we have other media types too for biological that are much more efficient yeah. so again we will put this in our in the history museum and then if somebody wants it by all means it's it's all yours. You can come and throw it $50, away. Fifty thousand dollars. Yeah. Yeah. Fifty thousand. I'll even hairs. sign it. <laughs> it sign I'll even yep. sign it so doll that hairs. makes it like <laughs> worth like five extra cents. <laughs> so you can anyway. make five cents. We can yeah, probably I put know. it down so it doesn't block. Yeah, me. I'm not. I'm gonna put it down and wait. And because it doesn't seem <clears> like it's been clean, it kind of smells. So since we've graduated from that, yeah. Do you, what is your guys' favorite uh, media right now as far as biological filtration? I'll start it off. I kind of have a little fanboy club going for it right now. Uh, the Polyp Lab Genesis yep. bricks. I freaking love those things. Um, I really like them for two main reasons. A, they're small, so they're designed for nano tanks. And B, legitimately, if you grab that and you like kind of hit it on something, that thing is not breaking at all. And that kind of serves a nice purpose and also not a nice purpose at the same time. Um, because some of the other medias that are out on the market now is if you look at them wrong, they're kind of going to start to disintegrate yeah, they, on you. They're like a, that pumice based. Yep. I think what we, we should do, we should follow up on that too and just have different systems use them. And over time, I mean, it, because they are newer products, you can see how we like them over time too. Yep. Yeah, but I do agree. Um, in smaller sump areas, I mean, nano tanks are, you know, it's not like it's a new thing and it's not like it's something that's going to go away. They are perfect for the backs of all in ones as well. Instead of having, um, you know, we do have like the marine pier um, balls too that a lot of people in small spaces were putting. But again, once you have those circles kind of not or 
space available for detritus to collect it it definitely can yeah and if it if the claims are true on how much surface area those bricks mm-hmm. have it's insane it yeah is insane. so if people like instead of biological back in the day you'd um there's a couple different options of obviously uh, live rock which no longer is real i mean there's some companies that are available to sell true live rock but I mean, live rock now, if you were to do a pound a gallon, a lot of it weighs too much. You'd have a rock tank and that's about it. Yeah. And these are so much more efficient. You'd need like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pounds of live rock versus this small little thing to create that biological, yep. to create that surface area for bacteria. Yeah. Caesar? Uh, Marine Pier. You're know, like, I'm assuming blocks for you since you have a bigger system. So, my, yeah. My Gregory. S- my sump is 125 gallons. Gregory. Just, just a second. We'll have to cut. Greg. We got to pause for station identification. <laughs> Can you guys hear us? <laughs> Gregory needed to chime in. Apparently, he didn't agree with Caesar. I know. It's just, I said Marine Pier, and he what goes crazy. It, he doesn't like Marine Pier. Yeah, he did. That's all that boiled down to. Jeez. Just He's hating Gregory. Marine Pier. Or it could have been my dog getting getting them going out there, too. Where's oh, you have... Uh, is your dog here? Yeah, he's outside. Yeah, he's outside. Oh. And also, so he comes free. Greg, again, comes free with this this bio tower here. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys know. I mean, he's also going to be uh, sentenced out to the raccoon-infested she shed with all the other delightful <laughs> things. If he doesn't how, many, how many dogs you got sitting out there? That I, have, I have... How many dogs? Three. Well, I have two of my own, but then Ted has his... No, I mean, how many you have sitting inside the shed since that's where you put them when they're... Oh, all the dogs that I've tried. Don't incriminate (laughs) yourself The trial dogs? That's not even a real thing. But yeah. YouTube, do not get on us about that. That is a total joke. No, I don't have any (laughs) trial dogs in the she shed. I do, do, though, in fact, have a family of raccoons that my neighbor has told me about several times, meaning that he wants me to take care of said raccoons. Said raccoons. So anyway, back to filtration and, and not raccoons. Caesar. Yeah, back to uh, <laughs> Marine Pier from Caesar. Marine Pier and back not raccoons. Back to Marine raccoons. Pier and big blocks. Yeah, so my sump is big. is a 125-gallon tank. So I went with 8-by-4-inch uh, Marine, Marine Pier blocks. And that seems to do the trick. So I have, I think, about Did 10? you say you have 8 Oh, I thought you said you yeah. had 8 by 4 No, 8 by All right. 4 like, inches. Cow, I meant, like, yeah, but he has 10 of them. It's still a lot. Yeah, it's yeah. the yeah. middle part of it. But yeah. I'm gonna throw. I'm gonna poke the bear because you hear a lot of people say this, and I have not experienced it. Um, that it leach it that the marine pier blocks leach something, and I haven't had any any experience with I that. And we mm-hmm. use them at the store. Um, I, we use them here in our personal tanks. We use them all over, and so I don't. I don't remember what element they were saying it was leaching, but I Some- found. I think it was aluminum. Aluminum, maybe? yes. Yep. Oh. So I found no um, basis for any of that. So I mean, we we continue to use the marine pier bricks. I never so had a problem. Thousands with it. of gallons. Have we put those into? Oh, I absolutely. Mean, like Tens the, of thousands of gallons. The amount yeah. of tanks we've set up with. Um, Not to mention all like the that. people out there on the forums. Yeah. Someone, if there's a rumor going around, someone had to try and do an ICP test on it, and and they you know, look yeah, up and something, we've you know? done several ICP tests as mm-hmm. well. A lot of times too, though. Um, uh, with filtration as well, um, people want an excuse why the, their stuff doesn't work. The good thing about what us, happened? though, is that when we when we sell the marine pierce for our builds, we sell them seeded. Just so huge. if something were going to happen, it sh- it's it going to happen. Be at the yeah, store, it should right. be at the should store. You should see it at the store. But yeah. some, right. you know, of course, when you're That's setting fair. up new things like what we discussed earlier, and I mean, sometimes two and two doesn't equal four. Mm-hmm. It doesn't? Sometimes. Oh. Sometimes. When we're playing with life and things like that, like setting and, up a and tank. That, and that, in, of that nature, as Ted would say. <laughs> things of that nature. <laughs> things, things of that of nature. That nature. <laughs> That's his um. And that is my of, um. <laughs> things of that nature. I like it. It's, it's good. I always get on them about that. I feel like it's, it's better than just doing the um or uh yeah or uh. 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 <laughs> <laughs> no, when you do the uhs, it's when you're actually intending to do yep, the uhs. Absolutely. Uh, Trying to get the are people we going. My dad does the end stuff. And stuff. Just randomly and stuff. Like, so are we. Uh, anyway, we're talking about filtration. Yeah. Yeah. And oh, stuff. I'm going to combine the best of both worlds. Uh, I use both currently. Um as far as which one's my favorite, right now I'm going to have to say Marine Pier. Just because I, I feel like Polyp Lab isn't 
tried and true yet. Uh, I feel like it very well could be. Uh, to me, it's a very intriguing product, and it's I'll, I'll definitely they're a good recommend company it. too. Yeah. So they're a trusted company. So I think, yeah. even though I think we should reach out to them, I think that would be good and do a product review on it. I would love to do just like set up two systems yeah. and just put Marine Pier in one and them in well, another. Well, and we and can see. a lot of those companies. Um, like Paul, they've already, you know, they have the science behind it too. So then yeah. we could just straight up ask yeah. them um, right. and what they've done so that you can trust the product yeah. as well. I know mm-hmm. that we don't just like th- randomly throw things in there, but it's, I mean, if you look at the basis, what you're actually doing is creating, you, you're you adding something that has surface area. So when people think, well, I'm just going to throw this in there and it's going to get rid of my nitrates. That's not how it works. No. Cause that's the other that's thing great. where people on the, on the boxes of a lot of these different um, bricks, they do say uh, reduces nitrate and phosphate, but there's nothing in the actual block that does that. It's the surface area that bacteria is allowed to to populate that then in turn consumes the nitrate and phosphate. Mm-hmm. That's what reduces it. There is It's not a medication. So I think that's important to say because a lot of people see that and they're like, well, I put six of these in there. Why are my nitrates still the same? It's like, well... <laughs> that you see yeah. well really you see yeah. yeah are they seated well no they i just it says right on the box they just decrease it it's like mm-hmm. okay it's actually a very good point because they they do say right on the box and it is one of those totally misleading things where yeah. it's like oh i just put this product in and it works magic doesn't uh bright will make a product like right well does too, too yeah yep. so they have one that like has a little egg bumpy but i think them. they had some that actually have something in them to reduce nitrates they right? might have some sort of bacteria they in they're them. like a different color sure. too I'm not sure. We should. It does it we release like bacteria? Yeah, I think what or? we'll do our following our our podcast next is maybe or in a couple of them we'll order all the different types of blocks and that'd be interesting to see the different yeah. ones. Well, even Fritz, they sent us one. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, Fritz is, makes like little cone style ball ones. Yep. Yeah, and so I think it would be interesting to do a little research on why they pick the shapes too. Yeah, that would be because it. there's a reason behind it. I don't think Absolutely. it's just like. Oh, you made a circle one. I'm going to make a triangle one. I don't well, think the, that's that Well, the bright well, I think the reason was because those bumps, if you put several you together, put, it allows for flow. Flow through flow between. And, and, and then yeah. also, yeah. Cause pod it, hotel is what their main claim to fame with the bright well one. Oh, it's true. They can yep. make a giant pod hotel pretty much with yeah. that grooved oh. into it. Ah. I remember talking to those guys once upon a time. Yeah, because <laughs> that too, well, we could ask them when we're at Magna because we're going to, well, we'll be busy at Magna because we have our booth, but we can talk to them about the different types of biological, because that's a big deal. Yeah. So I'm curious about that. Yeah. Deal. yeah so I got a 40 breeder, so I'm rocking one of those Marine Pier blocks, the eight by four by fours, and then um, two of the Genesis. But it, I was using just the Marine Pier before and I supplemented with the Genesis. So, it's biological is one of those things. It's like if it's an established tank already, you don't really know if it's doing more. Right, but I mean, in your 40 yeah. breeder, that's actually a lot. Yeah. Um, so if you think about it, because I know a lot of people, they see the price tag on them. The, just to clarify, sump is just the 40 breeder. Oh, and then the, right, tank, right. the tank is a 120. Okay, so. fair enough. Because yep. I'm like, you see a lot of these people that have like a two, 300 gallon. <laughs> you were going to get in trouble. <laughs> to a, no, I, I wasn't. You, I don't think you can. No, I mean, because the, one of the, the podcasts we talked about how many fish he's got. Oh, and we said, Tang, uh, he has Ted tangs. was saying he's got like 10 tangs and I was like, 20 uh, gallon earth. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I have, I have, uh, actually, my main display is uh, Marine Pier Bricks and uh, <laughs> yeah, Marine Pier Bricks <laughs> and 14 powder blue tanks. Yeah. 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 And I just stack them nicely to make caves. Yeah. And uh, no, I'm just kidding. The fish I have in there is like some isopods, some copepods. Yeah. Right. Just, <laughs> yeah. I just have pods and some some macroalgae yeah and and it's pretty sweet i have a sweet sea cucumber Ooh. <laughs> that looks like a turd yeah Sorry. Hey, you leave sea my turd. underwater turd alone yeah. <laughs> so biological um that is one um way to do it uh let's talk other ways to do it um well, this- obviously we're creating surface area for rock so um with a lot of people um with a lot of people as well, I think that uh, with a minimalist or the minimalist or what do they call it? The, that scape? Uh, the minimalist? No. I mean, they call it minimalist scape, but they also call it something else. Negative like, space. Negative space. Negative space. Negative space. Yeah. So it, um, a lot of times you have to make up for that with um, because you just can't create that balance. And a lot of people, you combine negative space with, let's talk about bare bottom. 
Oh, um, yeah. that's when you get the, you know what I mean? Now you have no biological, no surface area for any bacteria. So then you get, um, bacteria has to grow. It will grow. It'll grow on any surface it can. So then you get it all over your, you know, glass, glass and everything rocks. else. So that's and, the other thing. Your sand bed is going to be a big biological filter. Mm-hmm. Yep. It's a lot of surface area. So I think that's one of okay, those so underrated ones that yeah, people but, don't really associate with being an actual no, filtration they sh- they to it. They actually, just go, oh, this is aesthetically pleasing, not that yeah, it serves right, right. a purpose. Or so I then, want a goby, so yes. let me throw sand in here. But yeah. then it goes like, do you have one inch or six inches? Right? Ooh. Six mm-hmm. inches or so? Cheapers feel bad for Doug. Yeah, yeah it's six <laughs> inches. That's I'm doing What's pretty your, good. Why do you remember that club? That two inch club. <laughs> two inch club. <laughs> Proud member of the two inch gang. Oh, we have to have shirts that say that. Write that down. <laughs> yeah, but I yeah. Think, so uh, yeah. I mean, the, back in the day, I mean, they've gone through all of the stages when you have the plenum method, where it was like yeah. literally, literally, you know, literally half, half your tank, yeah, half your tank is a gravel. sand bed, and mm-hmm. don't disturb it, and all the black in there. That was really that was a sign of maturity yeah, you know. where you'd have all of the colors of the rainbow in oh, yeah. your sand bed and you're like oh it's doing something and you're like yeah it's definitely doing something <laughs> yeah, yeah. do not touch it though yeah, yeah. don't don't touch it poke a little hole yep. oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so i mean it, then it, i mean that's that's preference i think too i mean but it does serve a purpose yeah, so really. if and and depending on what i guess how deep your sand bed is you have to decide um, how much maintenance you want to do on it. Cause I think two biological people remember miracle mud. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and people thought that was just like, um, and it, it works until it doesn't again. It's not a set and forget. I, I used it actually. Yeah. I have experience with that and it does work, but you do have to replace it every it, so often. Yeah. And you yeah. have to, there's a maintenance protocol on it. Mm-hmm. It's not just dump a bunch of mud in there and be like, okay, there I got mud. Yeah. Um, Cause that's what you'll end up with a lot of mud and miracle mud with a, a layer of detritus on the top is not a uh, miracle. Yeah. No, there's no miracles that are happening. It's mud there. for sure. But yeah. Mm-hmm. Turn something else real quick. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> So, I mean, those are another, what are other options, I guess, for biological? I mean, those are the big two. I mean, some Refugium. people will say like foam pieces in the back, but if you're taking those out and you're cleaning them off, yeah, they're not going to Yeah, that's another thing for lot, biological. So. Generally, people will, how often do you replace them? The answer is never. Yeah, very minimally. Yeah. And like, when it needs to be. Like, you take those sponges out. I mean, if if you are using the sponges, you'd have to rinse them in, in the, water, in from your the tank. water from your tank. Yeah. You, you put those... You rinse them in our road, now you've killed everything Everything's and you're gone. starting your cycle over. But I, I got to say that usually in reef tanks, you don't see much of that. I no, think it's I more agree. a freshwater thing. Um, or fish no. only. Fish only, you yeah. do see a lot but more again, of But again, uh, the sponges are more of that where you re- we're going to hit on is that mechanical mm-hmm. yeah. um, filtration. You know, that first pre-filter of getting all the big chunks out first before it gets into the breakdown and of the biological. Yeah, then they do have them in the, like the all in ones, like the water box AIOs, mm-hmm. you know, things like that. But yeah, you primarily it's going to be your stony things that are going to provide the the biological sand, especially. Good you think of how much yep. surface area is just on sand alone. Ooh. It's a lot. It also depends on on how dirty their biological gets. Like I know a lot of people have issues with that, but it's because they keep their fuge with your biological there mm-hmm. now. Because of the light, it's gonna build up a bunch of stuff. I haven't had an issue, but that's because I have my fuge separate. Mm-hmm. So it's and the flow clean. generally is, flow is super. It is reduced, it. and so everything collects on the bottom. And mm-hmm. then I don't know if you've I'm like I put I wear gloves when I'm dealing with my fuge because I mean there's a lot of critter things in there that sting and stab and all all those bite. Types. Yeah, so I'm, a lot of people are like I'm afraid of my fuge, so they never even move their Cato or move their other yeah. macro algae and once you do that you'll see just bristle again. worms. Bristle worms, I know that. That's the worst one. problem. For sure. Yeah. So um you guys want to touch on the next one? Yep, mechanical, so we'll jump right in. Yeah, we can spend a lot of time on this. So I guess first I what I think is most important is like filter socks or filter, you know, uh roller, roller mats, roller mats yeah, or something sorry. catching you. the Right. More Preventing, poop. but you know, before that food starts to break down yep. mm-hmm. and all the poop and leftover detritus and waste poop? catching it. Yeah. yeah. Even no. if you're feeding your fish, like we hey, talked about in episode two, poop. yes. They, oh, we all we're poop. talking that, about, That's news to me. We're talking the dirty at <laughs> New Wave After Dark here. <laughs> <laughs> the dirty lots, goods. Lots yeah, of poop. Everything poops. So people are like, oh, I don't have many fish and I my tank's loaded with corals. I shouldn't have no problem. It it's, poops. No, no. So mechanical filtration. Even your snails um, poop. Yep. And what? It, yeah. 
That's nice to me. Have you seen a sea cucumber poop? Yeah, they're they're basically the only thing that it comes out cleaner yep. than when, when it they goes just in. Just sand, little, sand tube. They're, yeah, they're tube. little they're little conveyor belts. Yep. So poop goes in and then cute little sand pebbles. Did you see that? Out. Yeah, I was gonna say before I, it's actually like that. Yeah, it's I have pebbles. it back there. Yeah, I I like putting uh, sea cucumbers in. Uh, uh, I can't even think. Uh, I'm drowning in yeah. aquariums. Yes. yes. Thank you guys. <laughs> oh my God, was simply, that it? No, simply for the fact it was, I was going to try to say bottomless aquariums, but oh, I knew that wasn't bare it. Bottoms. Bare, bare bottoms. bottoms. Was it? Uh, just because you can see those little turds from yeah. the cucumbers cruising around. And you're like, oh, there's, yeah. he's doing his job. <laughs> it's like a little maze. You just follow him. Yeah, Pretty much like, around. oh, where's the cucumber? <laughs> yeah. Follow his clean poop. Trail? Yeah, that's the hard one. It's or like something. follow the clean. <laughs> but if you go in again, going back to basics to the ocean, everywhere I've d- I have dove, there's a plethora of different cucumbers and sand sifting mm-hmm. things. So that I mean, we can we're talking about now. We're, we'll talk about mechanical first, and then we'll talk about all the other types of filtration naturally that you can the animals provide mm-hmm. as well. But um, filter socks. Um, Roller, roller mats, mats, protein skimmers. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't need a protein skimmer. No, I have fish only tank, duh. Yeah. yeah, it works. They don't poop. No. Nope. So I, when people ask me, um, I used to do. I used to have this little bottle, this green cup of skimmate, Ooh. and I keep it under the counter. Um, and when people would ask me, well, you couldn't smell it. It was oh, well, no. me. I don't know. I I've lost my sense of smell now that I've yeah, it's protein it's skimmers don't really bother me anymore. Now that I think about it, I don't. yeah. I, so, I but I keep it underneath, boat. and people are like, oh, I I do water change. I don't need a protein skimmer, and I bring the cup and I set it down. I'm like, are you taking that out? Yeah, are you taking this out? And the, well, no, my water doesn't look like that. I'm like, mm, well, it's mine didn't either. And they're like, well, where'd you take this from? And I show them my coral system that has barely any fish. Um, but uh, at that time, very only few fish and tons of corals. And like, well, how does that even, ha- what, what is that? What's going on? Right. And I'm like, and I do huge water changes on the system um, as per every week. Every Nat- week. And we just were naturally from naturally. pulling water out. Too. Yeah. And, yeah. and so where is this magic green junk coming from? And why? Did, I mean, so, I mean, those are, yes, it, there is the stuff that you can see physically see like, um, people that overfeed i'm gonna throw my husband under the bus for um the bet for this red sea uh pre-filter mat um i saw i mean my filter socks were red because of all the pellets that weren't being consumed and no matter how many you put on top of the scully they weren't gonna eat it Mm -hmm. so i mean uh getting rid of that before it can break down but again filter socks need to be changed and that would be, you know, kind of a poke the bear question. Like, um, I know for my for our maintenance clients, you know, if we're going there every other week, they're like, oh, that's good enough. And it every other week is not because what it does, enough. it just pulverizes it and then allows it to either go through or start breaking down exactly what we don't want anyway. Right. Yeah. People don't want to hear it, but to be honest, and I and I think I told you when I started working with you that if you wanted to have filter sacks and you want the systems clean, you need to change them every other day. I know, and I, didn't want to, I definitely didn't want to hear that because I'm like, yeah. oh, that's a lot of work. Even that's if they look socks. clean yeah. to you, they're not. Yep. Yeah. What do you guys do for your socks slash roller mat slash pre-filter area? I got filter socks, so I change them every other day. Yep. You're in every other day? And he, I, I am starting to change mine every other day because, I mean, we are over time, just like anything else, it builds up. And so we're having some nutrient, you know, nutrient issues and I don't want it to become... Uh, an issue so i do notice i I mean i can almost tell you my corals responding when the field when i don't change the filter socks i mean going four days it's they're completely clogged it's and you can see it in the glass you can see it in the glass glass glass, 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 that is actually really good yeah it gets covered in algae quicker so it is a it is a pain to do the socks but if Mm -hmm. you if you're not going to want to do the socks and you're going to leave them um then I Maybe. suggest a roller mat. Yep. yep. And there's a lot of good options now. You have Clara C, Red C. Clear. You know, clear. Clear. Yeah. Yep. I mean, I guess it's kind of like changing your socks. Like, ugh. Could you, you imagine? Had, oh, if you uh, went like three days. Four days, yeah. Yeah. The same socks? Mm. Yeah. That's, that's, that's that actually, you're, you're, I'm going to tell my our customers that. Yep. Because it's <laughs> like, a hey, good analogy. Yeah, change your socks. Analogy. That, hey, write that down too. That, we're going to make that, we're going to make that as a t-shirt. Change your socks. Change your socks. 
Otherwise, Keep you're gonna your be playing fresh. Like a yeah. yeah, otherwise, you're the Nobody stinky kitten that. class. No one likes a stinky Straight kitten up class. Shoe now. Yep, just like, oh. you're like, ooh, <laughs> that's no es bueno. Yeah. Have a sock with a bunch of like dirty smells coming off. Yep. Yeah. Like Yo. pig pen. Yep. <laughs> just the stink craze. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, that. so that's important. So, even if you have biological. Um, or I'm sorry, mechanical filtration in place, making sure to take care of your mechanical filtration exactly, yeah. is also a key to success. Too. But that's so. a good key. thing, though, that you brought up. Uh, if you're not going to change them, get a roller mat. Yep. Yep. There's mm-hmm. options nowadays it's, that yep. will help that out. I mean, there's ways to cheat, too. If you if you can't afford the roller mat, you can also do like I know Red Sea makes those cups. That, oh, yeah. Plus the media the, cups. The, the media cups. Um, so we you can do, you know. Uh, mechanical media on a budget, you know, and you can put filter floss in there where you can, and it's super easy, just take it out and discard it and put new pieces mm-hmm. in there. So guilty. I have one on my uh, nano tank where I just literally have a little chunk of filter floss sitting on there every yep. day, pull a little chunk and of filter floss yeah, out. So, I mean, there's other in. options. Yes, we'd all like to have a three or four, $500 filter roller mats. Um, but if we can't do that, uh, the filter cups are, are like under 10 bucks. Yeah. And the filter floss is super cheap. There's there's ways of doing it no matter what your budget mm-hmm. is. So. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. So we can. When it comes on again to the convenience. It also be honest with yeah. yourself too. Is what are you as a aquarist willing to do for yep. the tank? Because yep. if you're selling yourself this magical dream, oh yeah, I'm going to be working on this for four hours a day. Oh, this is going to be amazing. And reality, you have maybe 20 minutes a day to look right. on it. Yeah. And you better plan accordingly because your tank will suffer. Yeah. Or yeah. you just don't like it. You don't yeah, like yeah, working you don't, on your and tank. And that's what I tell. That's what I tell all the customers. It's like my job is to make it to inform you and then also to give you the easy options because if it's not easy and it's a pain, you will eventually you like in two it. weeks, you won't do it. Yep. Mm-hmm. Just like testing, just like anything else. If it if it's 19 steps and you have to devote half, uh, you know what I mean? Every or half of your weekend to testing and changing filter socks, forget it. No one's going to do that. Yep. So here's a question. Uh-oh. If I have filter socks, do I need a protein skimmer? Yes. Yes. Hands down. You Again, crazy? I'm going to no. bring my, you can have your filter <laughs> socks and I'm going to bring my skimmate cup and I'm going to ask you if your filter socks remove that because it's still in your water. Mm-hmm. I mean, I didn't just all of a sudden just pick all green. Or so. pick up a filter sock, take your skimmate and try pouring it through and see what happens. Ugh. There's a, there's don't, a lot don't of. Don't try that at home, please. Not don't. in your tank. Or do that <laughs> yeah. like outside because that is going to yeah. be stinky. There's a lot of people that um, have now the roller mat and they say, well, my, my protein skimmer is not pulling uh, you know, enough of whatever. Well, put put it in a timer. Yep. You don't have to have it on twenty four seven. Put mm-hmm. it on a timer. Mm-hmm. And even though, and even and you know what? Don't put it on a timer because it helps with your uh, pH oxygenation yeah, of your yeah. water. It, that's the truth too. So even if it's not pulling what it used to, I mean, it, what was being what's being removed is removed. I mean, it goes back to what we talked about earlier. Your tests will show. I mean, you know, the numbers don't lie, yep. unfortunately. And fortunately, you you know, you play the game. You're like, Ugh. you know, I know I, I when I was gone um, the last time in Costa Rica and I know that the filter socks didn't get changed. And I knew when that test result, I'm just like, oh, no. And yep. Thirty five nitrate. Mm, that's it's a rough. thing. Yep. I mean, so even I've been doing this for forever. I mean, it happens to everybody. So, I mean, yep. mechanical is is really important. Because, and I also tell people, if you don't get those two, your biological, your mechanical done right, you're going to spend a fortune on chemical. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. You know what I mean? So I'd rather spend it up front on the equipment that takes care of the problem. For the most part, I, obviously, if you do the other parts of your, you know, the maintenance, but then you're not, you know, playing chemistry lab with GFO and then, oh, we have to do, you know, other phosphate removers, nitrate removers, nitrate additives, all the other things too. So if you, you know, kind of put it up front and get the right equipment first or the ones that, you know, are going to be the most efficient, then you can, um, I don't think chemical media is something that we, that it is always run in any reef system. When, no, would you I agree? Don't, I don't no. agree. It's I a last resort. Yep. You know? It's yep. more as an ad need. Yep. It is part of the triangle. However, they're not equal. So like the two legs are, you know, mechanical, mm-hmm. biological, and then that chemical is just basically that balance. Yep. Yeah, I would agree to that. That fine tune. I actually don't think I know a single person that runs chemicals long term on their aquarium for that matter where... 
<clears throat> like you are consistently running GFO 24 seven. You're M- consistently running, uh, what's the NP FOSS or whatever mm-hmm. that one is as well. It'd no probably pop. be more no on like a huge system, wouldn't it? Yeah, in, in major big, yeah, like, if you're going to do major system. Yeah. Um, but a lot of times they use other um, means, means like ozone and other things. Which yeah. we I've seen them use the, the sand filter. Yep. Oh, yeah, the big old. Mm-hmm. But that's, but that's, that would be mechanical. Like, that's true. Yeah, that's a giant mechanical. Um, or biological. I think it's a combination of both. both. Yeah, it would be both. Because it's forcing water through the sand to get all the impurities out, and then it's pulling it. But there's obviously bacteria. But But it's a surface. It's it's all the surface area. That's why they keep the sand in suspension. Yep. Mm -hmm. So... Anyway, I, I think um, it's important to make the distinction too between the protein skimmers and like the filter socks and the floss. Um, that the filter socks and the floss are, are removing, like what Jen said, the big chunks, particles. and the protein skimmer is removing the broken down waste that's in the water column yep. that's Proteins. already there that gets through the filter socks and the filter floss. So, yeah, it's the proteins, yes, part of the water, that, yeah, and it yeah. binds to it, and then you're able to remove it with the bubbles. Well, so. it's like the filter sock is removing the poop, and the protein skimmer is removing the pee. Or the there diarrhea. Or the, the diarrhea. pee's gonna go through yeah. the filter side, but it won't go through the. Exactly. Why do you always have to make it about poop yeah. and pee? Because you're, that's how they understand. Oh, that's, I, I see. You guys. <laughs> that's blame it on me. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> sure. No, it's because you're you're, you're getting dad. ready for a new baby, and you're gonna be changing uh, poop and pee diapers all mm-hmm. day long. Yeah. Poopy. That's pee-pee. gonna be fun. <laughs> <laughs> It's the uh, best time, right? So chemical filtration, we can touch on that. There are a million different products for chemical filtration. There's a million different ways of, of using it. Um, I think we all are in agreement, so it's more of a balance. An uh, if, if there's an imbalance to create um, that balance again versus, you know, having like, okay, each each system needs to have this amount of the, a GFO or any kind of... Um, you know, phosphate or absorbent media yep. of any kind. Yeah. It's also probably more at the beginning of a system because I do, I do have to say that at first I ran, you know, GFO and carbon or whatever. Yep. But now that with time and it's stabilized, I don't need them anymore. Mm-hmm. Well, Would you contribute that more to your pro bacteria being comparable yeah. to that? Or how do you, why do you think that that has come to? Because I think at the beginning, the system goes up and down on nutrients and also goes up and down on, on your biological, the, mm-hmm. the bacteria that you have growing. Mm-hmm. Um, you got to give it time for the, there's different bacteria in your water and your, your media, and only some are going to be predominant. Yep. Mm-hmm. So while that's happening, you get all the fluctuations and that's probably why you have to use those medias at first. Mm-hmm. Yep. yep. And to a lot of times going back to, you know, live rock isn't really a thing anymore. So using that dry rock, a lot of times you have, you know, it's mm-hmm. bound with phosphates and other things too, as, as per the, the, in the things that they use, the components that they use to make it. So you have to remove that so in it, some way. Speaking of that. So you think that people that run calcium reactors, some, you know, they're taking basically dead coral. Yep. You think that there's also the phosphates and nitrates yep. in that? I would have. Cause that's I going in the so. water. I mean, I depending know. upon how old and, and or how dead the coral is, I would think there would be some. I'm pretty sure it's pretty dead. I know, but like if, if it was sitting around for 10 <laughs> years in comparison to sitting around I'm pretty for sure white a coral. year. Well, you don't know because a lot of people are like, well, my coral, my acro is all white. When is it going to grow back? When is it going to yeah. grow its colors yeah. again? It's like, oh, when is it going to come back? Oh, dear. Now we have to tell. Yeah. It's or not. how it was stored, too, I think would be a what if to that. I I, I could see it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I just I know I that they know, did. But. Um, I know that uh, BRS did a big uh, study on, or big project on the different types of reactor media and the phosphate levels in those as well. Mm-hmm. So that and that is a thing. I'm just saying because people are like, oh, well, we get the benefits of all the stuff in in that co- that coral. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but you also get the bad stuff. Well, but if you look at what a coral is made out of, though, it's you know what I mean? Generally speaking, it's not the phosphate molecule isn't within that that coral skeleton, depending on. So that I guess I don't know how they. I know they utilize some of it. I don't know in which form is gonna. Yeah, because it. I mean, what a, a coral skeleton is comprised of. You know the the carbonate. Yep, calcium carbonate. Yeah. yeah, and the the yeah. So I mean, that's generally the, that's the premise behind that. Hmm. All right. <laughs> 
I was just wondering. I don't know. <laughs> that was Maybe you guys knew. That's why I asked. No, that's, that's fair. Good, that's a good question. And that's yeah. kind of what this whole podcast, I think, is mainly about, is kind of bringing different A ideas to the table and be hearing if somebody has heard of something yeah. different. Even we if all we have don't, different backgrounds. Yeah. Even if we don't find answers, too, at least it gets people thinking about yeah. it, you know? Absolutely. Well, and two, I mean, four heads are better than one head. Depending on what foreheads, I guess, but like a forehead. Yeah, <laughs> but I mean, you get you know you get this out there, and then people, other people can respond based on their experience. Doesn't mean that you know we have to take any of them, or they have to take what we're saying either. But at yeah. least, like you're saying, the conversation's there, and we can better understand it. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna be upfront and honest. Um, I'm not super versed in calcium reactors, but I I do know. Uh, so so I mean that's not. But I've I've started to learn more about Mm -hmm. i know i know the basic premise of how they work and i know the basics of uh you know coral skeletons and structural base but i'm not they're kind of that scary piece of equipment that i'm not i'm not too familiar with and i know that once you get them tuned in they're great but for me i'm kind of going back to the the old the old tried and true that's familiar to me yep two-part dosing yeah it works. Well, you can talk about dosing and all that other fun stuff at a later date when yep. I'm more educated. <laughs> um, so maybe like in 10 years or so. No, just kidding. <laughs> so come back and that time we'll do yeah. a whole calcium reactor episode. Yeah, we'll do a calcium reactor episode and I'll be, you know. Well, I mean, if everything goes well, we'll be here in 10 years. Yeah, that's fair. That's true. Mm-hmm. I mean, we'll then we'll get to do it. Rolling my buns a in a wheelchair. And then. Yeah. I mean, I might bring my cane with me, but. Yeah, I know, right? By that time, your kid might be able to That's do it. That's why we have to you know, work smarter, not harder, carrying all these buckets of water and huffing yeah. salt. Yeah. For It seems like the older I get, the heavier the salt seems. I'm glad I'm not the only person yeah, that thinks that, Yeah, I too. don't disagree with that. Yeah, I mean, the it's same like, man, the same bucket of salt that I'm like, pounds. I used to carry one on each, you know, now it's like I'm huffing and I'm carrying it like a like a sack of potatoes. Looking at the weight on it. That's <laughs> yeah. not 55 pounds. That's not yeah. right. I think it's 107. <laughs> Somebody needs a scale. Let's, yeah. let's put this on it. <laughs> yeah. Can't be true. <laughs> we did weigh one. What was it? Last week, I think we weighed one. And it was spot on. I forget if it was salt or something else, but yeah, it was. I thought we weighed... Um, one of the soda ash containers. Oh, yep, yep. There you go. Yep, that's what mm, it was. Well, same thing. Sorry, but well, even that topic, topic, but but. Yeah. So, so chemical. We're, yeah. Chemicals. We're talking chemicals and now weight training and everything and anything. Yeah, yeah. and stuff. Do you guys uh, use any it. sort of chemical filtration on your systems currently? Anyone? Bueller. Bueller. Nope. I don't. <laughs> I do. And chemical what, oh. on this one. I I run Nopox every once in a while. Um, or row of faucet, it depends who's okay. feeding my fish. Well, it's, it's, uh, Sad. So that's kind of what those things is. So is that in butt cut? Yeah. Count as that? Yeah. I would yeah. consider that. Yeah. I would consider well, that. then I'm running that. Yeah. So wait, yeah. do you like make a martini for your tank after one work? One for or? the tank, one for me. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like a joint party mm-hmm. thing. All right. That's fair. We that's party fair. hard down there. Yeah. <laughs> so vodka dosing, I know that, I, I mean, can you kind of expound upon that a little bit just because, some, I mean, some people are like, you just literally pour vodka in your tank. No, so and does it have to be good vodka? Yeah, Can like, I get Smirnoff? Actually, I, I, I know it sounds weird, but I. And I, is there I, nitrate and phosphate shit. in the vodka? No, so wait, <laughs> you're only putting goose in there? Oh yeah. Oh Ooh. my god, it's like me and like water, like my like Deuce well, Bigelow. I mean, my tank gets the filtered water, and I drink from the toilet. It's say that Pretty they much. don't. You don't need anything fancy, but. I don't know. Would you buy the five dollar bottle and it, you know, and your however thousands of dollars you have in your tank? Or you no, did? I'm probably gonna buy. I'm gonna go. I like to say bougie. I'm in middle bougie. of the <laughs> <laughs> middle of the road, I'm not gonna top go, shelf. This but, is know. what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do my water changes and do all the other stuff, and then drink the vodka. Actually, I don't. I don't. You I'm put that that doser hose to your mouth and the other one. Oh, there you, you go. Dose as your. Oh, yeah. so now, now it's all like the picture is coming too. I'm imagining Caesar doing like scraping of his tank and then just all of a sudden the doser go <laughs> scraping the tank, <laughs> scraping the tank, getting a little it shot helps. of vodka. You know what, for your vodka dosing, because I know you actually so use vodka. I do it because of my nitrates. Mm-hmm. If I, I have many fish, so if I don't dose, my nitrates will skyrocket. Mm-hmm. So I'm dosing 15 mils every day to keep my nitrates at 9 to 10. 15 mils straight vodka. Yep. Okay. Nothing else. Just literally right 
15 right mils into, right into the tank. Right into the, no. I Right I, into the bottle from your from Right your from the bottle to the doser to the uh, where the media is. Okay. The blocks of oh, media. Oh, right under yeah. the media. Yeah. So now correct me if I'm wrong. The philosophy behind the vodka dosing. He's getting philosophical. I know. This is scary, Uh-oh. guys. This Uh-oh. is scary. Is that you're literally just trying to outcompete the nitrate in your system or is that alcohol actually killing something Neither. in the system it's feeding it's, it's feeding, feeding. Oh. Yep. feeding it's my bacteria. Ba- it, yeah it's just a carbon source it's a food source for bacteria okay so because, the more food the more bacteria you get yeah because your corals want actually to consume nitrate and phosphate yep. they just can't consume a nitrate or phosphate molecule but they can consume the bacteria which consumes the nitrate phosphate. this is where you uh what they say your bio load Yep. I have more bio load than what my tank can handle. Yes. So by adding uh, dosing, I'm having my bacteria grow so that way they can handle that bio load. No. Oh, I thought it was how many inches per gallon or something. Yeah, I don't have enough. I'm to, just kidding. Um, <laughs> no, I mean, but that's, that's how if you want, if you have, I mean, you look at my tank too, I have a ton and ton of fish. And a husband that thinks that they're always as hungry as he is. So, I mean, I have no choice. Doug's going to kill us. Yeah, no. that's fine. He's okay. He's he's good. <laughs> but, I mean, he, you know, so every, you know, we have auto feeders. And we got to feed this and do that. Well, in order to balance it out, because I mm-hmm. I can only control so much. And his feeding, I just get given up on. Yep. So, yeah. I have to, so I use, I use no pox. Um, because, I mean, I could put vodka on there, but. It's the same. same. They're nice and fat, though. Yeah, yeah. I mean, my my mast angels, are, like they have shoulders. I mean, same with my yellow <laughs> anthias. They 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 do. Like no one likes a skinny fish. It's like a skinny baby or a skinny puppy. Yeah. That actually is a very true fact. They are, do. Have they do shoulders. have shoulders. I mean, <laughs> they look like little linebackers. Yeah, they're gonna have like neck fat. But they but if I so we got a pair and another another person got a pair and mine are twice as big. Um, and that's that what person. You said. It goes back to feeding. <laughs> it does know? go back to feeding, and they have a, a tank that's twice off. the size. Sorry. <laughs> so yeah, anyway, we I we like fish. I have a dozen or more wrasses. I have angels, um, and my mast angels. Yes, uh, they they do enjoy corals. We found out. Dad's uh, been watching them this entire podcast. Uh, this podcast, yeah, we're I've watching. Been trying to this, focus on these it. These masts are eating. A very beautiful well, so right now, and I can't well, even was, look. I'm was go a beautiful was well, so on this point, uh, now it's it's white. But I think if you just put a little bit of food in there, and the colors will come back. It'll come back. No, yeah. <laughs> it'll do it. It's kind of like when they like on. Um, I think it's Dumb and Dumber when he's. Oh no, it's Tommy Boy when he's like, "Is there something wrong with my face?" And you're like. No, everything's great. That's, That's what the well. So we're gonna make like. it. Yeah, and then the waitress comes by. What happened to your face? <laughs> and he's like, "See it? You know what I'm talking about?" Yes, I do. Yeah. When he whaps them with the two by four. Yep. Well, that's they ate my well. So, and it's not coming. Uh, no. So I'm not even gonna look at. It. I'm gonna pretend that it doesn't didn't happen. You hate you? to see it, but chemical. Mm-hmm. Um, here and there. So GFO when needed, um, when phosphates raise a little bit too high. Other than that, um, no carbon dosing um, of any form. Haven't tried no pox at all. Um, prefer try to stay away from that if I can and just mm-hmm. control, you know, the food going in. Um, so, yeah, just GFO if my, you know, nitrates and the phosphates kind of get unbalanced, you know, because the issue I have now is where, you know, the nitrates will stay around zero and then the, the phosphates will get around, you know, maybe 0. 0.07, 0. 0.10. And then so, you know, feed more and then, you know, obviously balance both them. go up in tandem and just trying to balance it out. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, we all kind of do the same, but different. There's a, tons of different options of, yep. of how to do it. Um, and so, again, when... You know, I know in the you want to maximize the amount of fish. I mean, obviously, you, we get these big tanks. We don't just want two or three fish. And as long as you get, you know, they have enough room to grow and thrive. I mean, there's ways to counterbalance yeah. them pooping all the time. Well, like you, for example, this this tank, you have a lot of fish in it, but mm-hmm. you also have a very big protein skimmer that's probably well oversized for the system. Right, and a, and a huge too. Yep. So I'm, I and mean, the Nopux. And, but the nopox, I'm going to be honest with you, the nopox is at a very, very low dose. Yeah. But it keeps mils. it enough where you can tell if I if it gets if it if it goes dry, then it, it spikes. It just keeps it in check. That it does. It just keeps it in check. So, bit, so I need that little extra help. And plus, I I can tweak it as if you know if we have 
guests over, then the fish, of course, get fed bit that extra. much more mm-hmm. because oh, show them, look how bad they're like. Mm-hmm. You eating. have to show people <laughs> the yeah, fish like, feeding. They'll eat so. out of your hand. They do. They'll eat out of your yep. hands. And so, I mean, but how cool. many times per day do they need? Do we need to show that? Mm. At least it depends 10. on how many people you have. I know. And then oh, I'm like, oh, emergency <laughs> water change. <laughs> It's funny. I think that's a true Aquarist right there when you're like doing something extra in your tank and you're just sitting there thinking, oh man, look at all the extra maintenance. I'm going to have to do myself. another water yeah. change yep. this week. <laughs> that's the, I think that's the difference between me, uh, between um, like a business owner with doing maintenance as, as a, as a career and then my husband being a hobbyist. So Big when, difference. when he does things, he's like, well, I have Saturday to tinker. And I'm like, I'm thinking I need to get this in and out. I need to, I have other things I got to do. You know, this is not the first tank or the last thing I'm doing today. So he's just like, he's a kind of like laissez faire about it where I'm just like, Oh, this is going to be a night. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I unfortunately have to agree with that. Some days, I mean, working on tanks all day long, you go home and the last thing you want to do is deal with your tank that may be dealing with a high phosphate or a high nitrate situation. And you're just like, well, here, I'll just throw some chemicals at it. It'll be all right. Right. And ultimately, that's really hurting yourself in the long run instead of taking the extra steps and actually figuring out why my phosphates are so high and or why my nitrates are so low or whatever the problem may be. You just have to force yourself to do the work. Absolutely. Yeah. And I mean, you have a different challenge than most because yours is nano. And I personally think that the smaller tank you have, the more challenging it is because water parameters change so rapidly. And I mean, an extra pellet or... Oh, 500 in a small tank is way more detrimental than, you know, these two systems are linked. So there's 300 gallons right. worth of water. So, I mean, we can, we can work with that. But um, when we do our tank upstairs, we're doing that 600 gallon and you better believe we're going to definitely have to over filter it because you'll find a way to feed that thing too. Right. <laughs> My mean, thought is, is the big one is on uh, nano tanks, you have maybe a day to react to it on mm-hmm. those larger systems. You have two, maybe three days to react yeah. to it. Um, sometimes if you, Great example is my elk doser went on for the weekend. I dumped about 12 mils into my system. Now, most people that's like, oh, nothing, but I have 14 gallons. Yeah. Yeah. 12 mils rose it 12 points. (laughs) Wow. Yeah. Did a huge water change, got it right back down again. But it was just like one of those moments where you're like, Oh wow! Yeah. My my elk went from eight point <laughs> nine to right around twenty, and I was like, so "Oh, well, you're you, talking literally twelve literally, points, literally oh, twelve points." If you those, if you're you those know, I, get I think stuck, you, I think you need to throw but, out a sheesh on that. Yeah, that one is definitely not like. So I'll I'll preface what had happened was <laughs> it happened yesterday. I noticed it. I was looking at my tank, and it was a little cloudy in there, and I'm like looking like, "What the hell happened? Did Caesar come over or something? What's going on?" Did Caesar come over? (laughs) What would I do? My joke is Caesar does something special to his water. That's all I'll leave it at because we're keeping it PC. PC. (laughs) And so then I look at it, do some quick. I just got. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, PC rainbows. Uh, So then I did a quick water test and I found that out, and yeah. That was a fun little moment of going. Thank God I have five gallons and if your doser gets stuck on. Yep. You're done. You're done. Yeah. 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 In a nutshell, if if I wasn't there yesterday, my tank would have crashed. Sheesh. And that to me is one of those <laughs> where you, you definitely go that, oh, sheesh. Yeah. And minus a few letters and add a yep. few more. Yep. A lot yeah. of four letter color or four letter oh, uh, yeah. colorful words. There. Yep. There was quite a few asterisks, a few arms in the air. <laughs> I beard see bullying. That. Oh, it was bad. Bad. Beard bullying. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's like, oh, Ted had a major aquarium emergency. He's missing chunks. Yeah, I, know. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly thought you guys were going to notice, so I did pull a chunk out over here. Oh, you did? Oh, yeah, because oh, I was like sitting there like, oh, oh my no. God, what is going on with my tank? Did you lose anything or is everything okay so, so far? So far, the only yeah, thing beard. that's looking kind of frumpy is um, <laughs> one of my mushrooms. And of course, it's like the nicest mushroom yeah. that I have. Oh. To my like, job I'm expensive. Breaker. I'm dead. Yep, my jawbreaker is all curled up and pissed mm. off at the world. And I'm like, oh, yay. Like, Not really excited to go home. shouldn't even affect you anyway, jerk. Exactly. Like of all the coral in there, it's the little mushroom at the bottom yeah. that's good. It's <laughs> always the, your most favorite piece. Yep. That it is. Oh, absolutely. First. And it just started to show off its little reds and stuff oh, in there. Course, so it's like, yep. oh, yay, you're finally doing something. And now. <laughs> yeah, he's like, I want to give up. I'm yep. dead. Now I'm pretty sure. Life is terrible. I'm ruined. Yep. Maybe you should get a bigger tank. Maybe I should. Yeah. Maybe yeah. not. I have enough big tanks at work to play with. Oh, yeah, it's true. true. 
where I get to just play with my little guy at home. I'm pretty See, sure I'm going to switch it over to just being softies and nems and mushrooms and things like that just for ease and also help easy. with yeah. nutrient Dosing control too. too. Yeah, I Absolutely. wish I could. I can't get away from the sticks. Dude. Yeah. It's something about them. Once you get a good stick colored up, it's hard <laughs> to... You know, oh yeah, get that off. Yeah. Thank you for laughing at that. Yeah. I was One day you'll know, like, Caesar. Oh, One day you'll know. God, we're so mature. I mean, <laughs> it's are. like he, giggity. He, he said stick. Giggity. <laughs> <laughs> he said poop. <laughs> <laughs> we say poop a lot here. I yeah. know. Did he say poop and sticks? <laughs> yeah. Uh, never mind. We're oh, not man. going there. Anyway, yep. thank you guys so much for watching. This is uh, New Wave After Dark, and uh, see you next time. No sign ups, huh? No. What do we say? No, we were waiting for Caesar to do his. Oh, what did we do? Well, I thought El you were going to do yours. Oh, I'm up next? Okay. It's Ted, the Mountain Man Morris, signing off. <laughs> this is Brendan. <laughs> we need to come up with a good name for Brendan. So, guys. I don't have a nickname yet. We're looking I, for a nickname the for The comments him. below. For Brendan, comment below. Yep. And uh, make, is, sh- make sure they see your what face. What is yours? Man. What is yours? I just say. Uh, Adios, senor. Your favorite Mexican. Yeah. <laughs> oh my so God. Your favorite so number, episode two, you guys have to look at it because his sign off on there is fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> I just say, this is Caesar, your favorite Mexican. Oh, dear. Piece. And then he goes. And this is Jen, and I just work here. Yeah. <laughs> that's a good Thanks one for watching. Too. And have that's a good one, guys. <laughs>